Good morning and welcome to this online service this morning. If you're joining us for the first time, we'd extend a really warm welcome to you on behalf of the church family here at Amblecote Christian Centre. It's great to have you join us and our prayer would be that as you listen, uh, God would speak to you, that you'd feel and sense the presence of God with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning our online service splits into sort of three pieces mainly. Firstly, we're going to just in just a moment, hand over to the worship team who are going to lead us in worship. And then Rox is going to come, as she has over the last few weeks, and share a little bit about how we uh, can practically share the love of God in our own family units. And uh, we've been joined by different members uh, of our church family and different families over this period of time. And we're going to be joined by the Allen family this morning. And they're going to share a little bit about how they do just that, how they share the love of God together as a family unit. But before we do that, I want to read to you uh, a verse from Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 16. Uh, Isaiah is looking forward to the coming of Christ, to the day when God's self-giving love is put on display at Calvary. And, uh, and so let's turn to uh, Isaiah 28 verse 16. And it says this, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm laying in Zion a cornerstone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for a foundation, firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be shaken. Here Isaiah looks forward to this coming of Christ, to the laying of a firm foundation in God's act of self-giving love at Calvary. And I think you'd all agree that every edifice of any size requires a firm foundation. You cannot build satisfactorily or successfully without a firm foundation and there are loads of things that we can build our lives on but the scriptures exalt us to build our lives on the firm foundation which is that self-giving love of God displayed for us at Calvary and it says that when we build our lives on that firm foundation we will not be shaken, our lives will not be disturbed. And there are many things that touch our lives in all shapes and forms. There are many shakings. And the COVID virus that we've just experienced as a nation and globally is one of those shakings. And yet it says that those of us that believe, that put our faith in Christ, will not be shaken. What a great hope this is for us as the people of God. We give thanks to God, don't we, for establishing in Christ a foundation, a firm foundation, on which we can build our lives. Let's pray together before we hand over to the worship team and join them in worshipping God together. Father, we thank you for the coming of Jesus, for the birth, the death and the resurrection of Jesus that provides for us a real true foundation on which to establish and build our lives. And we pray, Lord God, this morning, you would speak to us clearly and powerfully and that we would be aware of you uh, building us up on that foundation of your self-giving love expressed in the death of Jesus at Calvary. So help us, we pray, as we worship, as we listen, and as we respond to you, in Jesus' name. Amen.
distraction, my attention. He said, Don't you? My devotion, Jesus, my portion, my affection. He said, Don't you?
Hello, we now have our episode four of our Family Fang series. I'm super excited this week because we've got Matt, Alina, Judah, Josiah and Serena. So families, pay attention, go and grab your teens, grab your kids, grab your uncles, aunties, grandparents, whoever else, and bring them back to see what they've got to tell us. Send them lots of love and support um, and enjoy the video. Hi guys, we're the Allen family and we have with us Judah and Josiah and myself. Uh, Serena is around somewhere, she may pop in at some point and um, Alina's not well so she's not going to be joining us sadly. Um, but we've been asked to share a little bit about what we do as a family for our family devotions and um, I, I do want to start off by saying that we don't do it as consistently as we like to um, so, so I just want to you know if that's you as well don't feel bad um, but what we do when we when we do do the family devotions together we we have a kind of a set kind of way of doing it and uh, we just want to walk you through that today and hopefully it'll, it'll help you when you guys do your family devotion so we typically start off with some youtube worship uh, videos that have the lyrics on so that we can all um, participate and enjoy and sing and then we will um after that we'll pray so we've we recite um, the Lord's Prayer and Psalm 23 we pray we pray those and then we will look at a passage of scripture um, so what we've been doing is starting from Genesis working our way through um, so today we're going to be looking at um, a passage from Colossians 3 12 through 17 and Judah's going to read verses 12 through 14 for us Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And all of these, over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the message of christ dwell among you richly as you teach and administer one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do whether in word or in deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him that's colossians 3 12 through 17. So when, when we read them, we then ask some questions about the scriptures. So guys, what are those questions we ask? Um, what does it say about God and what does it say about me and other people? Okay. And it, and what are the other questions, Julia? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> what does it say about... Uh, what can I do to... What can I do to implement this into my life? Yeah. And, and then, who can I tell? Who can I tell? Who can what I does this tell us about God? Do you have any ideas on what it could, what it could maybe be saying about nope. God? No, not really. Okay. So I think one of the things that we can kind of learn about God from this is that he desires unity from his people. Um, and he also desires for Christ to rule in our hearts. Um, so that's one of the things that we can learn about God from, from this passage of scripture. We then ask the question, what can it tell us about ourselves or other people? So in this passage of scripture, it talks about how as God's people, we should be compassionate, which means that we should um, have empathy towards other people, or that we should have a love for other people and a care towards people it talks about having kindness it talks about having humility which means being humble and not being proud it talks about being gentle which means not being harsh with people but being careful with our words it talks about being patient which means that we are able to 
forgive and to bear with one another, which is what the next verse says. It says, bear with one another and forgive each other. If you have any grievance against someone, so forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. So as we go through our day, as we, we go through our interactions with each other as a family, we need to remember to be compassionate and kind, humble, gentle, patient, and bear with one another, which means put up with the things that maybe annoy us about each other, and to forgive. So if we do something that hurts the other person, we need to forgive them, just as God has forgiven us. And then it also says to put on love, which binds all of these things together. So we need to learn and we need to be loving towards each other. In family, in the family of God, which is, you know, our church family and those people that we see uh, that God's called us to be together with. And then it also talks about letting Christ rule in your hearts. So we need to let God have his place in our heart. So then the final question is, who can we tell about it? So as a family, we talk about, you know, friends that we might know or people that we might know that we bump into that maybe we can talk about some of these things that we've learned and um so so that's kind of what we do um we, we have worship we pray read scripture ask for questions and then and then we we pray again at the end and um, about some of the issues maybe we have as a family or maybe some things that are on our mind and and kind of that's our family devotional time and uh, thank you Say bye guys. Bye. morning it's good to be with you today I hope you're all keeping safe and well what I want to share today is based on an experience that I've had during this time of lockdown and my prayer is that uh, what I share today will be a help an encouragement and also a challenge for us all I'd like to suggest that life is based on two basic ingredients years or time and experiences. Now, none of us know how many years we have, but we all know that every day we face many different experiences. Some are small and insignificant, others can be large and also life-changing. How we live <clears throat> our daily lives and handle the experiences we go through will have a bearing on how much peace, joy, contentment and stability we have. I'd like to suggest today that making the word of God the foundation on which we live will govern to a great extent the quality of our daily life. Just before I share further, I've asked Anne to read a few verses for us from Matthew chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, 
you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Thank you, love. Here, Jesus makes a point at the end of his teaching by giving two examples of men, one who built his home on the rock and the other who built his home on the sand. Both are going through the same experience. Both are in a storm and it's a tough time for both of them. But one stands and the other falls. The point here is not what they built upon, the rock or the sand, but the reason why they built like they did. I believe Jesus is sharing a fundamental principle for living the Christian life. And the key is found in chapter seven, verses 24 and 26. Let me read them for you. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And in verse 26, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. One man builds his life on the words of Jesus. His life is strong, it's stable, it flourishes. But the other is living in disregard of what he's heard. And his life is weak, it's unsafe, and it easily topples. In chapters 5 and 7 of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus gives us his famous teaching, um, the Beatitudes, or the Sermon on the Mount, we call them. These teachings cover many different aspects of how we should approach and respond to different experiences that we live in our daily lives. In these chapters alone, over a dozen times, Jesus says these words, I say to you. Here, then, he ends his teaching by giving these examples of two men going through a storm. One man heard his words, made right decisions, and withstands the storm. The other, he chooses to ignore the words that he's heard. He makes wrong decisions, he struggles, and eventually, sadly, he topples. It's not just in the Sermon on the Mount <clears throat> that we have uh, teaching for living our lives. The whole of the Bible is God's word for living a strong and a stable life. On page after page, there are instructions on how to live. Some can be hard to live out. We have to accept that. But these are not given to make life hard or to restrict us. These instructions are given to make us strong and stable, and especially when those storms blow. Let me share a situation uh, from my own life that hopefully goes some way to explain this principle. A few weeks ago, <clears throat> during lockdown, I found myself struggling. I felt niggly, nothing seemed to be quite right. 
I had quite a negative attitude about so much that was going on in my life. And I just seemed tired for most of the time. I was continuing to read and to pray at this time, but I just couldn't shake off the way that I felt. And then God graciously spoke as I read his word and he gave me a strategy, a strategy to overcome how I was feeling. That was brilliant. But it was only then that I suddenly realised, you know what, I've been here before. Later, I look back in the journal that I keep and I notice that three years ago, I was going through a very similar experience. And God gave me then exactly the same instructions that he was giving me now for the same situation. But why? Why was I here again? The bottom line was simply this. I hadn't done what God told me to do. You see, it's vital that we hear the word of God and builds our li- our build our lives upon it. This word, this word is so important for the foundation for living our daily lives that we may be strong and grow stronger each day. Let me just share with you a few examples from scripture. Due to the time restraints of today, I'm only giving you an overview of these scriptures. We would all do well to give more time to fully understand what these scriptures uh, imply, what the word of God is, is being said to us. These instructions are for us to apply to our daily lives so that we may remain strong and grow stronger each day. I don't know about you, but uh, in life, we can all uh, tend to go astray at times. We can tend to take detours, or we can tend to even get lost. If we want to know the leading of God in our daily lives, then we have to look to scriptures such as Proverbs chapter 3. It says this, and I'm sure many of you know this scripture so well, like I do. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. The scripture says here very clearly that we need to trust him. We all have a mind and we're to use them, but we're not just to rely on the understanding that we have. We need to put him first. We need to submit to him, to his will and purpose for our lives. And then, then we will find his leading in our lives. And then then again, there are times that we so easily become anxious and worried about everyday life. In Matthew chapter 6, the scripture that Anne read for us, these verses talk about being anxious and worried about everyday matters. It talks about what we wear and what we eat. But then we're told at the end of what Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom and then all of these other things will be added unto us. Sadly, in my life, and I'm sure in many others' lives, we prefer to be anxious and worried rather than putting the energy into seeking his kingdom first. And then again, there are many times, I'm sure, when we feel a direct attack of the enemy. We feel that Satan is piling on the pressure. But in Ephesians 6, we're told to put on the whole armour of God. Then we will be able to stand. This is such a powerful scripture, such an important scripture. But I don't know again whether you like me. I've read this scripture many, many times. I can recite what uh, the scripture tells us to put on. I have written them down just in case I should forget any one of them. But we put on the belt of truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We put, we have our feet fitted with the gospel of peace. We hold up the shield of faith. We put in our hand the sword of the spirit. We know them. We read them. But how much do we apply this word 
to our everyday life? How often do we put on the armour of God that we're able to stand against the attacks that Satan brings into our lives? And then as a final example, have you ever felt weary? And have you ever felt or come to that point where you feel as if I can't go on, I need to give up? We've got a very, very simple instruction in Hebrews chapter 12. It simply says this, fix your eyes upon Jesus, then you will not grow weary or lose heart. Great scriptures that need to be applied into our everyday lives. I've already said there is page after page of these instructions on applying the word of God to help us to navigate the different experiences that we have in our daily lives. There are many examples throughout the whole of the Bible of people who did and didn't apply the word to their lives. If you can remember the example of um, Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15, Saul was made king by God and yet he didn't do what he was told to do. He disobeyed a clear word from God and sadly the kingship was taken from him. We read an amazing um, chapter in 2 Kings 22. We read there that the nation of Israel is in a terrible mess because they did what God told them not to do. And they put other gods before the Lord. But then King Josiah, he turned it all around. How? When he read the word of God and put it into practice. When he obeyed what God had said, and the whole nation was saved. Turn to the New Testament in the Acts of the Apostles. God, through the Holy Spirit, tells Ananias, go and pray for a man named Saul. Ananias knows this man, is a killer of Christians, a destroyer of the church. However, he did what God told him to do. He went and he prayed for Paul. Paul, sorry, he prayed for Saul, and Saul became Paul, the greatest missionary this world has ever known. There are many more examples of people who did and didn't build their lives on the word of God and who experienced the consequences of those decisions. Let me draw to a conclusion by sharing a very simple strategy that I believe will help us to build our lives upon the word of God. And I would encourage this strategy daily. Firstly, read the word of God. Don't neglect it. Read it, meditate upon it, study it. It's so vital to our word of God, to our lives. Maybe there are times when, you know, life is so busy that maybe just a verse is all that you can manage. Then read it. Or maybe you have more time. You can read a chapter or even a book. Or even Christian books can also, God can also speak through them. But read the word of God daily. But secondly, not only read it, then I suggest that you pray. Pray that God will speak to you specifically over what you are reading. Don't just read it and think to yourself, well, I've done that for today. Pray and ask God to speak. And then thirdly, very simply, listen. You know, so very often, um, I don't know whether you're the same as I am, but you can read and you can say, Lord, speak to me, and then you can just move on and not wait to listen to what God says. God wants to speak into our lives, and my prayer is that we will listen to what God has said once we've asked him to speak. And then finally, do. Do what he says and apply it to your life. And don't be like me, three years later, having to learn the same lesson again. Can I just say at this point, if you're not sure you've heard God or you want confirmation of what you've heard, then please go to somebody you trust. Go to somebody that you have a relationship with and ask them to pray with you about it. This is one of the great benefits of being a part 
of the church of God, the family of God. So we hear God through his word and we do what he tells us to do. Then our lives will be built on solid rock and will flourish and we will experience stability even when the storm blows. Let me close now with an example from the life of Jesus. In John chapter 2, there's a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his mother were invited. They went to the wedding and everything was fine. But then the wedding began to experience difficulties. Things started to go wrong. And Mary said to the servants these words, whatever he tells you to do, do it. The result, everything was restored. Everything was back on track. Today, I'd like to leave you with these same words. Whatever he, his word, tells you to do it, do it. God bless you. Well, that uh, concludes our time together online this morning. Uh, our thanks go to the, uh, to the band for leading us in worship, to Rox for sharing with us, and of course to the Adam family for joining us this morning. And, uh, and last but not least, to Phil for our great message this morning. Thank you, Phil. So don't forget to join us online this Thursday. It's our church family meeting on Thursday night at eight o'clock. Uh, details will be sent by email. 
Uh, but in the meantime, uh, my prayer, our prayer is that you would have uh, a week in which you encounter uh, the presence and person of Jesus in a real and powerful way. Uh, may God be with you this week. And why don't we just close our time together in prayer. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for that you're a good God, that you're for us, not against us. And we pray, Father, that this week, this week would be for us in the variety of different, in a variety of different ways and in a variety of different circumstances. Uh, uh, may there be points of encounter with you and with your presence as we learn what it is to live faithfully according to your word and build on that firm foundation that you've established in your self-giving love at Calvary in Jesus name. Thank you for joining us. We pray blessing upon your lives and upon your families. See you next week.